Okay, now write down. The kingdom of heaven is expressed in seven ways. Jesus explained that in parables, as I have written down here, he said the first one is sour and sour and good seed and tares, mustard seed and yeast and hidden treasures and fine purse and net. It's seven here. Seven means what? Seven is God's perfect number. That means that it has a spiritual significance inside, especially in his first parable here, the sower parable. It takes about 20 verses here, chapter 13, verses 3 to 23. It's interesting enough that some parables Jesus stated and after he interpreted the parables. Okay? Not all parables Jesus interpreted. He just gave the parable, but over sometimes here, especially over here in sour, sour parable, Jesus stated and he interpreted to his disciples because it will be very difficult for them to understand. But even his interpretation needs special spiritual insight to digest. Even his interpretation was not that easy. We need a special insight to digest. Now in his sower parable here, he made four different kinds of examples, four different kinds of examples, okay, as a plant, as a farmer who, who, who will plant the seed, okay. The seed symbolizes the gospel the good news of Jesus Christ. The seed symbolizes the gospel. And now Jesus explained it. There will be four different kinds of people. There will be four different kinds of people who will respond to the gospel, who will respond to the gospel. By illustrating this diagram here, this diagram here. Now, first kind, the first kind of person is the man who will receive man like the one beside the road. In other words, man like the road here, his heart looks like the road here. Heart condition, his, his mind, heart condition. It's like a road where people are stepping on all the time, okay? Now when the gospel drops, on the road and people will drop and they will have their foot step on they will not value 
the gospel. They will not value the gospel. They will step on it. And not only that, they say, he said this, he, they will not understand. They will not understand the gospel. And the birds later will come down to take it away. So the gospel will not even settle in your heart. Birds represent the Satan. When, when this man hears the gospel, gospel will not even enter in his heart and he will not even understand the gospel and, and, and deny it. And Satan will take it away, meaning deny it. The birds will pick it up. Then, what kind of person you would call this? There are two interpretations on this. First, under the Calvinism would be what? Those who are chosen to be the children of Satan. Therefore, when gospel comes, they are spiritually blinded. The children of Satan, so they cannot even understand the God's message. That's uh, what we call it non-believers or Satan's children. Now, the second interpretation on this, in light of the previous verses here, see that here is Jewish people. Jewish people, with an exception of 12 disciples. Jewish people, with an exception of those 12 disciples. You know, because it said in verse 14, Jesus told Isaiah, he said that, you know, they hear, but they cannot understand. It's God's plan, the Jewish people. Later, they will open their, uh, their hearts, but for a certain period of time, you know that I've given you the Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 20 to 21. Yeah, that Jewish people, it was God's intention to make them blind for a certain period of time. As we look at the, as we read the previous verses in the same chapter, these will be under that category. Okay, you know, when we study all within the chapter 13 context, these will be the, that kind of people here. Okay, are you with me? Yeah, so we have two kinds of categories under this. One is uh, Gentiles, unbelieving Gentiles. And second is unbelieving Jewish people. Now, and the next category, okay, now here, people, the person received the gospel. The gospel dropped on the seed, the seed drops on the rock, okay, on the rock. You see, Jesus said this. Verse 5, he said that 
Others fell upon the rocky places where they did not have much soil and immediately they sp sprang up because they had no depth of soil. But when the sun had risen, they were scorched and because they had no root, they withered away. You see now here, they withered away. Now here, this rock here, on top of the surface, of its surface, there was a real very thin layer of soil. Got it? So when seed drops, how about root? It's a little bit of root, okay, there. So now it the stems and branches will out. But what would happen? When sun hit her and that withered, what kind of man would be? I'm going to ask you. The gospel, the gospel, seed is the gospel, right? The gospel dropped there. And now he said it, it's been withered. That means what? Is that saved? Is he saved or not? Huh? Our brother from Myanmar, tell me. Is he saved? I'm talking, we're talking about the person. What kind of person this would be? Now here. Okay, okay. Now the first person was that he could not understand the first one. You know, rocky one? Not rocky one, that the, the, the road, okay? That he could not understand. It was spiritually totally blind. Okay? Now the second person is what? Did he understand? Now, you see, in the, you look at verse 19. Jesus explained this in verse 19. Even verse 19 said, now the, he explained the road Christian, road man, he said, road, you see, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and so on. And verse 20, and that's, that verse 20 is what? That's a rocky here, okay? Let's see. And the one, the rock, he, Jesus explained this, a rocky one. And the one on whom seed was sown on the rocky places, this is the man who hears the word, immediately receive it with joy. So now, did he understand the Bible? He understand the meaning of the gospel? Yes, yes no? Yes. 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 But what will happen? And then in verse 21 said, Yet he has no firm root in himself, but is only temporary. When afflicted and persecution arises because of the word, immediately he falls away. Now here, what kind of outside uh, attack, persecutions, temptations? Now, what kind of people is, is that? Is he, he, was, he, was he saved in the beginning? Huh? In the beginning, was he saved? Why? Because he received the word of God with joy. But problem is what? Not shallow. Okay, the root was not deep enough. When temptation comes, when religious pluralism hit, okay, then they will fall into that temptation. The salvation would be what? Lost. Jesus explained this. You know, later in, 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 in the chapter 24, you know, although those who will be in the religious pluralism will lose their salvation. 
We will study that later in chapter 24, verses 23, 24, all the way to 28. Matthew 24, 23 to 28. We will study that later, not today. The salvation can be lost. Because of what? Because of the shallow root. Okay? So your, if your heart is stubborn, okay, you're like rock. You only accept Jesus and his teaching, his salvation work, but you don't want to go deeper down. You accept intellectually. You say, okay, Jesus, I believe in you. You are my savior. But you don't want to go deeper for personal relationship. Because of your stubbornness of your heart. There will be many people like this. This is a Jesus' prediction that in the kingdom of God, there will be a, there will be a, a man like this. And third, third person here, and thorns. In the, I put down here thorns here, thorn. The seed, the gospel, dropped, okay, in the thorn. Now, now let me read verse 7, then you see what kind of Christian it would be. And others fell among the thorns, and the thorns came up and choked them out. The thorn choked them up. Now here, that means he ex Jesus explained this one, okay, in verse 22. In verse 22, he said this. And the one on whom seed was sown among the thorns, this is the man who hears the word and the worry of the word and the Disciplines of the riches choke the word of God. And it becomes unfruitful. In other words, the word of God, word of God dropped here, okay, and it sprout out. But under the thorn. So it comes out. Branches and leaves, okay, will come out. Then it will, it will hit by thorns, bushes, thorn bushes. But it will, it will hurt by the thorns. Because of this, that tree cannot bear the fruit. Now, Thorn symbolizes here. Many Christians will be attacked by thorns. Okay? Not perseverance. Jesus says what? And worldly worries. And money. He said that. Money. Money and worry. All these secular desires, because of these, those are thorns that will poke you all the time. That you can, although your 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 root already, okay, went all the way down to deep. You know the Bible well. You have a solid foundation, okay? Tree is kind of a solid tree, firm tree. But you've been attending church for many years. You are elder, pastor, evangelist, even apostle. But always thinking of money, power, self 
ambition, all these worldly desires, Jesus called them idol, idol worshipping. Okay? When you do that, you cannot bear the fruit. So the fruit is what? Fruit of the Holy Spirit. You cannot bear, you cannot even bear the fruit out of the gospel. You cannot make a good disciple out of you. You are worldly Christians, he said. You are legally saved by the gospel, but ethically you are still, you are still acting like a non-Christian. Get the thorny Christians. Okay? And Jesus predicted that there will be many Christians like this, thorny Christians. You know, I have given you before, there are six uh, levels of uh, Christian growth. Number one is what? Nepios. Write that down. Now the thorny Christians are Nepios. Second is Pideon. And third, Technion. Fourth, Neoniscus. All these, one, two, three, four. Infant, child, teenagers, adolescents, and youth. Okay? First is what? Nepios means infant, nepios in Greek word, and paideon means child, spiritual child, and spiritual adolescent, teenagers, called technion, technion, and spiritual youth is Nea niskos, nea niskos, nea niskos. So all these are thorny Christians, not bearing fruit. Now the final number four Christian is a good soil. Okay, over here, the word of God goes all the way down to your heart and bringing beautiful stems and branches and bearing fruits. He said, 30 times, 60 times, 100 times, bearing fruits. Now, in the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, Jesus predicted, in Matthew 13, to his disciples that, you, my disciples, you will see four different kinds of people when you go out and preach the gospel. Okay? That they should be able to distinguish these four different kinds of people. Can you? See? Now is a, now is a, in a good soil Christians are, out of the number, uh, uh, you know, five and six. What is a five, Christian, in spiritual level? Huios, son. Okay, Huios, son. And number six is pater, father. Yeah, pater, father. These two high levels, okay, is associated with the good soil Christians, multiplying 30, 60, 100 folds. Now this is the parable of the sower. Okay? To memorize this. And then he said this. Next is number two. The parable of the good seed and tares. Good seed and tares. I'm going to read it for you. You just, as I read, you just copy, okay? You, you copy it, okay? 
you don't need any explanations here. As I read it, and, 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 and the Bible text will give you explanation. And now verse 24, you just go down to your note. And the one who whom seed was sown on the good soil, the 24 here, he presented another parable to them, saying, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sow good seed in his field. But while men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed tares also among the wheat and went away. What do you mean by tares? It's that the good seed is the gospel. Okay? Good seed is the gospel. And how about tares? Tares, and who brought the tares? Men, okay? The man sleeping, his enemy, okay? That enemy is what? It's Satan. Satan will, will plant tares and run away. In other words, among, in this world, there will be many Christians who will be planting seed. Many Christians, okay? At the same time, many devil's children will plant their seed, okay, among the us, even inside of church. Wrong teachings, devil's teachings will be inside of church as well. In this world, many, many, many bad teachings against the Christians. And when the wheat sprang up and born a and then bore grain, then the tares become evidence also. So these wheat and tares growing together. Christians and non-Christians will, will live together. Now, you know, in a natural, you know, natural, uh, you know, farm land, you will see which one comes stronger and more. Tares, wheat, wheat, you know? Even in our farmland, you see, you have to take care of wheat. Otherwise, wheat will take over our, our fruit, our vegetables. So it will be more wheat, tares, than wheat amongst us. And verse 27, and the slaves of the landlord came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. And the slave said to him, Do you want us then go and, and gather them up? And he said, No, lest while you are gathering up the tares, you may root up the wheat with them. You know what I mean? If you want to damage, if you want to take all weeds away, many good wheat, okay, may get damaged. So let it be like that. Allow both to grow together until the harvest, judgment. In the time of the harvest, I will stay, I will say to the reapers, first gather up tares, and bind them in the bundle to burn them up, but gather the wheat into my barn. You see, at the end of what? Judgment? God is going to separate non-Christians and Christians. And non-Christians will be in the burning barn. What is it? Burning place. Hell. That is God's plan. In other words, this Society, from the time of Jesus all the way to here, it will be, society will be like this. So more non-Christians, and they will be, it seems, it appears okay, that these uh, wheat, no, these uh, weeds, tares, you know, conquering this world, more in numbers. And Christians will say, why don't you destroy, kill all those? Eliminate all those non-Christians. Jesus said, don't do that. Wait until the 
day of judgment. Isn't it encouraging? Yes. Huh? Who said this? Jesus said so. And this is the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is not only the saints living together. Saints and, 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 and filthy saints living together. Now here, third. Famous, the parable of the mustard seed. Not, it's not a many, it's a oh, mustard seed, one single mustard seed. Then what mustard seed would be? The gospel. That's the gospel. Okay, good news gospel is mustard seed. Okay? Here now, let me read again, 31. He presented another parable to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, and this is smaller than all other seed, but when it is full grown, it is larger than the garden plants, became a tree so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. So now is a mustard seed is symbolizes as the gospel of Jesus Christ. It will start from Jerusalem now extended to all Judea and Samaria okay and all and to the end of the world now that gospel started 2000 years ago became a big tree okay under the big tree branches all over and birds nesting and people will enjoy the, the shadow underneath, resting. This is Jesus' prediction over the, you know, the expansion of the gospel. Like a small mustard seed that will grow like this. So the gospel whether you want it or not, whether you, whether you work for the gospel or not, doesn't matter. That will be expanded. It will grow and expand the branches and leaves, multiplying, multiplying the leaves. Some say the birds nest, so that's a Satan. No, I don't think so. See, because in the previous city, birds take that. Over here, the birds nest. Two interpretations. Birds are just the Christians. But now if it's, a, if it's what? If it's a, a, a Satan, then even the, in the trees, inside, birds are there. Satans are there. Nesting. Two kinds of interpretation. So it's not a 100% uh, 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 you know, uh, out of out of 100%, I'd say, well, you know, in a church, in a Christian community, it's a, a birds, a, the Satan, nesting inside too. But I don't, I don't want to interpret that way. I, I want to interpret if birds are uh, Christians, you know? Yeah, and this, in this context here. That doesn't matter. The issue is this. The issue is the small mustard seed gospel will expand. Okay? That's the key issue. The next parable is, is quite opposite to this. Next parable is the yeast parable. Yeast. Here, verse 33. He spoke another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a leaven. You see now, leaven is a yeast. Okay? Now, what is unleavened? Unleavened is Jesus. Okay? Unleavened bread is Jesus. It's a leaven is what? That's a 
anti-Jesus. It's, it's, it's a satanic symbolic symbol of anti-Jesus. Okay, that's uh, devils. Okay, and now here, it's like a leaven which a woman took. You see, woman now represent church and Christian woman. And hidden three pecks of meal and until it was all leavened. Now here, this is another teaching here. Jesus said, in a church amongst the Christians, there will be Christians supposed to eat what? Unleavened bread. What is the unleavened bread? Symbolizes Jesus and the word of God. Okay, pure word of God. Because the bread is the word of God. Spiritual food, bread. And I will give you at least four references on that. Maybe five references. Number one, Psalm 119, verse 103. Psalm 119, verse 103. And secondly, Jeremiah 15, 16. Jeremiah 15, 16. Number four, Ezekiel 2, 9. Number three, I'm sorry, Ezekiel 2, 9. And also number four, Ezekiel 3, 3. And I'll give you one more, five. John 6, 32 to 59. John 6, 32 to 59. All this okay, teaches that the word of God is the spiritual bread. Okay, you read it later. Word of God is the spiritual bread and spiritual food. This word of God, that God's word of God, spiritual bread is unleavened bread. No yeast bread. Okay? Pure. But Jesus predicted that woman, meaning a church, and Christian. Okay? Woman and Christian will will have leavened bread the leaven leavens put it in the bread in other words the church and christians especially pastors and theologians will put the a, uh, a yeast inside of the bread Okay? Impure teachings, secular teachings, mixed with the word of God. Then he said, once the yeast involves in the bread, then the speed of the growth, speed of the expansion will be so fast, it will it will expand very rapidly, influencing people. So now liberal theology, theology and religious pluralism, all these kind of teachings are very attractive. And humanistic Christian teachings, are very attractive. So all these teachings will be transferred very fast, like yeast covers whole bread in a second. This is what Jesus predicted. That's why we have to only teach 
unleavened bread. Hmm? You know, today church is teaching not exclusively the blood of Jesus, not exclusively the identi identi identification of Jesus Christ, but, you know, on Sunday preachings, even your Bible studies, you have Bible references, and then you just uh, hear all kinds of interesting stories. How to make yourself happy out of Bible references, how to be successful le leading your life, how to have a good relationship with your spouse, your husband and wife, how to deal with your children, how to overcome all the temptations, and all the how to, how to, how to. Family matters, business matters, how to be a financially independent, how to be a wealthy, how to not to borrow money from others. All these teachings, okay, on Sunday, how to get rid of anxiety, how to make yourself self-reliance, self-respect, there are many how-tos, how-tos. Okay? How to be a good steward of your time and your money. How to be uh, healthy in your physical body. All these things. Yes, we need all these teachings. Okay? in light of the Bible, you know, lessons. But these are not a main, main issue, main theme, teaching in the Bible. Bible is the theme on who Jesus is. And what has he done? Why did he come to this world? Why he died? All these things. He is the first coming king of kings, also the second coming king of kings. When he comes in the first time, he came here as a suffering servant. Now later he will be a triumphal king of kings. All these so we have to teach on Jesus exclusively. See, when you're out of Jesus' teachings, then you are actually feeding East to women, church members, and church. Then that teaching will spread very rapidly. You know, even today, every country, your country, even America, even Korea and other countries. You know, me as an as a international, uh, you know, preacher traveling around the world, if I said to people that this time theme is how to make yourself happy and how to make you financially independent, and then, then Thousand, thousand people coming to here. And also including, you know, he will be a physical healer. Okay, when he lays hand upon you, then you will be healed physically. So he is, uh, you know, you know, in a healing, you know, minister. You advertise it. 
then thousand people will come. And my message will be, how can you heal? How can you be healed? And all these, you know, all these messages and people, hallelujah, hallelujah. Are you okay? Yes, I'm not now. My, my cancer is gone. Hallelujah, everybody. But they don't know who Jesus is actually. But if I say, we will, this pastor, this preacher will teach you how to die in Jesus. That's the theme. <laughs> then about 10 people come. Now, here is very interesting. Now in verse 44 here, in verse 44, then the righteous will, sh okay, verse 44, and okay, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field which a man found and hid and from joy over it and goes and sells all that he had and buys that field. See, over here is verse 44. This is very powerful. You see, now there will be a Christian like this. Not all Christians will act like this. This is special Christians. Okay. Once he, once he discovered the gospel is so treasured. He knew the gospel. Jesus is a hidden treasure. Okay. Then he will, he will sell all his properties for the hidden treasure. He will substitute his value system. He will give up all these worldly things, okay, and he will invest the expansion for the expansion of the kingdom of God. Not all Christians will do this, but there will be a few wise Christians who will have this dramatic life changes. And value system changes. There will be some people like that. And he was uh, challenging his disciples. You should be. Okay. Like the Samarian, Samarian lady who, who just, uh, you know, throw away her uh, water uh, you know, water uh, container, okay, water, and ran up to the mission field to share the gospel, like that. How about you? I assume that all of you, you know, belong to this category. I hope. If you are if you are in this category, would you say hallelujah? hallelujah? Okay. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You see, this is what Jesus is teaching us. Because this is a mystery, he said. This is the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. Okay? People will not understand all these mysteries. And the number five, six. It's very similar here. Verse 45, it said, again, he said, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking fine pearls. Upon finding one pearl of a great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Okay? You see here, same idea. This man, you cannot have both together. This is the issue here. You cannot have both together. You cannot have the pearl, fine pearl, and all the worldly position together. You have to give up one. Substitute. That's why you have given up money making. Okay? Here in Korea, some of you, some of you will make more than $1,000 a month. 
Okay? Now you have given up that. Now you join here. Amen? Amen. Say so you are blessed ones. Amen. You are blessed ones. There are some still many students, future our students, but they said, Dr. Wang, Dr. Wang, I want to come to join your school, but I cannot because I have to make money. I say, <laughs> forget it. <laughs> You challenge your, your, your friends. They have to give up one on the other side. That's, you just use these, you know, Bible references. Okay? Then the final one, number seven parable. Number seven parable is just simple. It's a judgment. Judgment. Okay? Now here, verse 47 Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a, a net cast into the sea and gathering fish of every kind. And when it was filled, they drew it up on the pitch and they sat down and they gathered the good fish into containers, but the bad they throw away. So it will be at the end of the age, the angels shall come forth and take out the wicked from among the righteous and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be a weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus said, have you understood all these things? They said to him, yes. As I say, have you understood all this? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. He said, there will be an end time and judgment, okay? Dividing people into two groups. Good fish and bad fish. That's why Jesus said to you know, Peter and, and Andrew that you are a fisher of men. See now here, chapter 13, Matthew, you know, shows us, okay? The kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, is mystery. Especially the these seven, these seven parables, okay, is a mystery to people, even Christians and non-Christians. But only those selected, chosen people, it is not a mystery. You will understand, not only understand, you will accept 100%. And from the first century all the way down to the end, the judgment time, these seven kinds of people, events, will take place. Here again, there are four different kinds of people, okay? Amongst the Christians, there were three kinds of Christians. Actually, the rocky place Christians will fall up. They will lose salvation. They become Christians, but later they will lose salvation. Over here, thorny Christians and good soil Christians. So all these teachings. And of course, there will be two kinds of people in general in this world together. God's children and Satan's children. They will live together. But which is more stronger and more in numbers? Satan. Satan's. We are stronger than, you know, we power is stronger than and more than wheat. And it's like a mustard seed. Okay? Very tiny, small, but it will expand to whole world. Okay? Mustard seed. And also it is like a yeast. You know, the wrong Satan's teaching will invade in Christian and church. But it will expand very rapidly. And hidden treasure, 
and fine parts, there will be some Christian who will give up this world and you take and buy the God's ministry. And at the end, there will be a, you know, division amongst the Christians and non-Christians. The judgment there. So it's Jesus said, this is seven, seven parables, seven perfect complete number, okay, about the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. 